In this video, you will learn about the principles of database transactions and their ACID properties. A classic example of a database transaction is the process of transferring money from one bank account to another. Here you can see a database table called Accounts. It has two columns, Account Number and Balance. Of course, this is very much a simplification. In reality, the database used by even a small banking operation would be much more complex than this. Nevertheless, the principles of a database transaction can be demonstrated here. Suppose we wanted to transfer £1,000 from account number 3 to account number 5. This would involve subtracting £1,000 from the balance of account 3 and adding £1,000 to the balance of account 5. A database application could achieve this using two separate SQL update statements. One update statement would deduct some money from the source account, and a second update statement would add the same amount of money to the target account. As well as these updates, the system might also keep a log of these changes by inserting a new row into a table called, let's say, transfers. What is absolutely crucial in this scenario is that all of the changes are completed successfully, or that none of them happen at all. Imagine the possible impact of taking a large amount of money from one person but failing to give it to the other, or the impact of giving someone some extra money but failing to make a deduction elsewhere. People's livelihoods, and indeed the bank's reputation, are at stake. When it comes to databases, any group of data modifications that must all be successful or must not happen at all is called a transaction. By the way, let's be careful about the way we use the word transaction. A bank's database would no doubt store detailed records of every deposit and every withdrawal that has ever taken place, and of course, every transference of money between accounts. Exchanges of money like these are commonly referred to as transactions. Indeed, when you buy something from a shop, with cash, money is exchanged, and this is also commonly referred to as a transaction. But in database terminology, the word transaction means an indivisible unit of work. This means that the term transaction can be applied to all sorts of database applications which don't involve money at all. In this example, we want to archive some old students. This involves moving a selection of student records from one table to another based on their year of graduation. This could be achieved with an SQL insert statement, followed by a delete statement. As before, it may be crucial that both steps are completed successfully, or that neither step happens at all. We don't want to lose any data, and we don't want duplications. These insert and delete operations should therefore be performed as a single, indivisible unit of work. They should be performed as a transaction. One way you could implement a database transaction is with a stored procedure. A stored procedure is a sequence of SQL commands saved as a single program within the database. That can be called when needed. A stored procedure would normally include at least one parameter, so it can be reused. This one, for example, would allow you to supply the year of graduation when the procedure is called. In case of errors, the insert and delete statements would be put inside a try block, and a catch block would include code to handle any errors. To ensure that these data modifications happen as a single unit, they are enclosed within begin transaction, and commit transaction. If all goes well when the program runs, all of the changes will be committed to the database. If there's a problem, the transaction will be rolled back and any partial changes will be undone completely. SQL, or to be more precise, Transact SQL, provides lots of control when it comes to transactions. For example, you can define save points in a stored procedure and roll back to one of these instead of all the way, depending on what goes wrong. 
You can also nest transactions inside each other. That is, you can have transactions of transactions. A single transaction can also provide control over data changes in different databases. If you're developing the front end of a database application in a high-level programming language, such as c -sharp or VB.net, it's possible to define and control transactions in the program code rather than at the database level. High-level programming languages also provide commands such as begin, commit and rollback transaction. The details of these are beyond the scope of this discussion, but what's important to appreciate now is that a transaction is an indivisible unit of work. The properties of database transactions are often described by the acronym ACID. A transaction must be atomic. This means that all of the changes made by the transaction must execute as a single unit. All changes to the data must be performed successfully or not at all. A transaction must be consistent, or to be more precise, data must be in a consistent or valid state before and after the transaction. Put simply, the transaction mustn't leave a mess behind. For example, if the intention is to move records from one table to another, the total number of records in both tables must remain the same. When money is transferred between two bank accounts, the total amount of money must be the same. A transaction must be isolated. No other person or process can change any part of the data while the transaction is running. For example, it shouldn't be possible to update someone's bank balance if it's already being accessed by a transaction in progress. A transaction must be durable. After the transaction has completed, the changes made by the transaction should persist, even in the event of a system crash. Of course, once the transaction has done its job properly and everything has succeeded or been rolled back, another valid process is then free to modify the data.